सो हेलो व्हाट्सअप आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग ग्रेट वेलकम टू अनदर रिवीजन सेशन इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज द टॉपिक ऑफ ग्रुप ऑडिट आई यू कैन कॉल इट ग्रुप ऑडिट और यू कैन कॉल इट ऑडिट ऑफ कंसोलिडेटेड फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिटेल द लीगल प्रोविजन अबाउट इट वेदर द कंसोलिडेटेड फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट आर अ कंपल्सरी थिंग आंसर इज येस वेन एवर एंटिटी हैज अ सब्सिडरी एसोसिएट और ज्वाइंट वेंचर कम ऑन Whenever entity has a subsidiary, associate or joint venture, they are required to prepare the CFS as per section 129, subsection 3. Second thing, sir, what are the provisions which will be applicable to the preparation, presentation, and audit? These principles are the same which are applicable to a separate financial statement. That means you have to prepare the financial statement as per the Schedule 3. You have to prepare them as per the accounting standards. In case you have a exemption. in case you have a exemption from the preparation of uh, consolidated financial statement still you need to give the disclosures of schedule 3 now sir comes the question when when will the entity not be required to prepare a cfs in case three conditions are satisfied what are the three conditions parent entity is okay even the non controlling interest or you can say the other members they are also okay with the entity not preparing the cfs ठीक है, दीज टू एंटिटीज आर ओके बोथ द पेरेंट एंटिटी एज वेल एज द एनसीआई आर ओके दैट मीन इट इज अली और पार्शली ऑन सब्सिडरी ऑल इट्स अदर मेंबर्स दैट मीन द माइनॉरिटी होल्डर्स दे हैव बीन इन्फॉर्म इन राइटिंग प्रूफ ऑफ डिलीवरी इज अवेलेबल एंड दे हैव नो ऑब्जेक्शन टू द एंटिटी नॉट प्रिपेयरिंग इट सी एफ एस इवन देर इज नो जनरल पब्लिक सर नो जनरल पब्लिक मीन्स इट इज ना इधर लिस्टेड एंटिटी नॉट इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ लिस्टिंग एंड द थर्ड केस इज द पेरेंट एंटिटी this entities parent entity or the ultimate parent entity they are preparing their cfs so ultimately a cfs is prepared and is filed with the registrar as per the accounting standard so these three conditions if satisfied you are not required to prepare the cfs similarly if there is a investment entity sir what is a investment entity like a mutual fund mutual fund also invests in some companies shares and companies yes sir but whether they are doing it for some synergy purpose or just for the sake of investing they are doing it just for the sake of investing when they are doing it just for the sake of investing india says no need to prepare the cfs so again who is a investment entity three conditions need to be satisfied they are taking the money from the unit holders they are taking the money from the uh, people for what for providing investment management services then investing the money in the shares how they are making money they are making money from the capital appreciation the shares value is growing or they are making the money through the dividend income that is the investment income or both and the third point is they are measuring these shares they are measuring these shares on a fair value basis that means if there is a increase in the value it is credited to pnl if there is a decrease in the value again it is debited to the pnl that means they are valuing the shares on a fair value basis so these three points you need to remember taking the money for investment management services investing the money for capital appreciation and for investment income or both not for the purpose of trading and the last point says very simple thing measuring on a fair value basis in case there is a parent of a investment entity then in that case cfs has to be prepared unless that parent is also an investment entity now sir there was a question in which you gained a control over a subsidiary and in the next year you sold that subsidiary so we call it as a temporary control so if there is a temporary control or there is one more thing operating under severe long term fund transfer restriction that means the subsidiary is not able to give dividend it is not able to transfer the funds to the holding company in such cases in these two cases the accounting standards the accounting standards allowed you a exemption from the preparation of cfs but in as 110 says you have to prepare the cfs you have to prepare the cfs we don't give you any exemption for temporary control we don't give you any exemption for operating under severe lftfr sir so what is lftfr long term fund transfer restriction we don't give you any exemption if you got control you got to consolidate come on if you got control you got to consolidate that means the day you gain control over a subsidiary your consolidation begins and it continues till you lose the control so this is what you need to write in the answer and your answer will be complete now comes the question responsibility of parent who is responsible for the preparation of cfs sir management of the parent entity so what is their responsibility first of all identify identify who are the subsidiaries 
who are the associates who are the joint ventures that will become a part of this consolidation so identify all the components once you have identified all the components get the information from them obtain accurate and complete financial information before you consolidate make sure you do the consolidation adjustment what are the two consolidation adjustment gap adjustment sir what is a gap conversion in case the subsidiaries financial statement are as per accounting standard parents financial statement are as per indian accounting standard so that accounting standard to india's conversion needs to be done similarly if the subsidiaries accounting policies are different from the parent harmonization of accounting policy needs to be done so this is a five step process identify the component obtain the information do the adjustment two adjustments are gap conversion and harmonization of policies and last two points generally you forget in fr in audits or what are they in as 24 in as 108 related party disclosure and segment reporting got it sir then comes the auditor's objective very simple the auditor objective is always to obtain a reasonable assurance or you can say satisfaction satisfaction that the financial statements are prepared as per the frf once you get the satisfaction you can give your opinion about the true and fair view then you talk about two company audit section 143 1 say with me 143 1 143 143 1 inquiry 143 reporting and the last part little ajeeb sa part sir what it says <laughs> It is a little antique part. I don't know why they have given. Validate the requirement of preparation of CFS. Is the entity actually required to prepare a CFS or not? Now we talk about materiality. Sir, in case of materiality, you need to compute materiality first of all for the CFS as a whole. You compute the materiality for the consolidated financial statement. This big materiality you use for two purposes. First of all, for auditing the consolidation adjustments, whether it is permanent or current. Second thing, to determine what are the material components. To determine what are the material components that you need to focus as an auditor. Whoever are the material components. Now, for each of these components, you need to compute a separate materiality. Now, for each of these components, you need to compute a separate materiality. So, call the component auditor. Hello, component auditor. I have calculated your materiality. Do the audit. Okay. Are, wait, wait, wait. Confirm, confirm, are you independent? Yes. Will you comply with the code of ethics? Yes. Will you do the consolidation things properly? Yes. Will you give proper disclosure? Yes. So make sure you take the confirmation about code of ethics, independence and whatever information that you may require for consolidation or disclosure requirements. Now sir comes one point, one more point. In case in case in the uh, audit report of a subsidiary, there is a qualification. In case the audit report of a subsidiary, it is a qualified report. Do I also need to qualify my uh, audit report of consolidated financial statement? The answer is no. The answer is no. Again, in that qualification or modification, you need to consider materiality. Now, sir, when it comes to planning the audit of CFS, first of all, you all understand what is planning. Planning the audit procedure. That is risk assessment procedure, further audit procedure. What is the risk assessment procedure in which you take the understanding? So, first of all, understand, understand the gap. So, what do you mean by gap? Group structure and the group-wide controls. App for accounting policy. Understand the accounting policy of the entity. Once you are done with the understanding, you will, under, you will get to know the nature, timing and extent of audit procedure. And trust me, you don't have to do it all. You can also delegate. You can also delegate. You can use the work of other auditor. And when you are using the work of other auditor, coordinate do coordinate with him these are the five points you need to consider now sir as an auditor how do i ensure completeness of all the subsidiaries all the associates and all the joint venture just relax baby calm down okay you don't have to take the stress let the management take it so understand the management's process understand the management's process of identifying the components okay and ask them inquire them whether this year there is an additional component in the consolidation or there is any co component that moves out of the consolidation. As an auditor, last year also you did this. So, review your previous working papers. Three points, done sir. Now sir, the other points are very simple and logical. How does one component become my component? Sir, how do I get a subsidiary? By investment. So, review the investments of the parent. Review the joint venture, joint arrangement, other arrangement. Come on. 
joint venture, joint arrangement, other arrangement, and similarly, you can see the other changes in the shareholding. So, these are the basic, basic points that you can see as an auditor. Now, there are two types of consolidation adjustment, very easy, permanent and current period. Come on, permanent and current period. What are the permanent consolidation adjustment? Basically, your India's 103. <laughs> these are your India's 103. In India's 103, what do you calculate? NCI and goodwill. Yes, NCI and goodwill are your permanent consolidation adjustment. So, as an auditor, you need to focus first of all on the identifiable net assets or you can say the pre-acquisition reserves of the subsidiary and the date of acquisition. Because on that date of acquisition, whatever are the reserves of the subsidiary, they will get allocated between the parent and the minority. They will get allocated between the parent and the minority and subsequently, when do you think there will be a change in the NCI? Sir, NCI changes whenever there is a change in the shareholding. So, this also you need to see as the auditor. Now, sir, it can happen in one subsidiary, there is a goodwill. In another subsidiary, there is a capital reserve. On the face of balance sheet, can I net off both of them? Answer is yes. You can net off both of them on the face of balance sheet. But in the notes to accounts, you need to separately disclose that goodwill amount. You need to separately disclose that capital reserve amount. Now, sir, coming to the current period consolidation adjustment, we did some pairing. Sir, what was the pairing? First of all, intra-group indebtedness. On that indebtedness, there must be some interest. So, intra-group interest paid or received. Another pairing was what? Transfer of assets. So, if there is an unrealized profit on the transfer of assets, eliminate it. Whenever you eliminate, it leads to a deferred tax. So, these two points are connected. And the another two points were the ones we discussed in the beginning, harmonization of accounting policy and gap conversion adjustment. And the gap conversion adjustment. Plus, also remember one thing, sir, what? In case the subsidiary's financial statement, US subsidiary's financial statement are till 31st of December. And the consolidation is done on 31st of March. Is it allowed? Answer is yes. The maximum gap that is between the subsidiary's financial statement and CFS, it could be maximum 6 months as per AS, 3 months as per the INDAS. Okay. But as an auditor, you need to make sure if there is a significant event between these two dates, it should be properly accounted for, it should be given effect in the CFS. There was a question also in the question bank. Uh, done, 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 done. Now, this point from MCQ point of view. Sir, what is to be disclosed? In the balance sheet, assets minus liability is equal to capital or you can say net assets. In the PNL, there are two major figures, PNL and OCI. So, you need to disclose the net assets, PNL and OCI of all the entities, parent entity, subsidiary, associate, joint venture, all the entities forming part of the CFS. Plus their percentage, plus their percentage to the total net assets total PNL and the total OCI, not TCI, not TCI, not total comprehensive income, that is the total OCI, other comprehensive income. Then we discuss some examples of information which is given in the separate financial statement but need not be given in the CFS. Very easy, easy topic but still let's do it. <laughs> so, what was this topic all about? First you get money, then you spend, come on, first you get money, then you spend. That means you get the money by the issue of shares, some free shares, some money shares. So, first of all, you talk about the bonus shares. Whenever you issue a bonus share, what was the source of issue of these bonus shares? It could be capitalization of reserve, reserve security premium account, disclose that. Okay. Second thing, when you issued the shares for money, not free like bonus, whenever you issued the shares for money, in case some money is unutilized, what is the, so, what is the form in which that money is kept? What is the form in which it has been invested? Talk about that. Now, let's talk about the foreign expenditure. What is the foreign expenditure, sir? Imports. Imports on CIF basis, that is cost insurance rate of RCC. Raw material, capital goods and your, last point I always forget. Raw material, capital goods and your components and spares. Got that. Components and spares. Got it, sir. Now, sir, out of this, uh, imports of goods, you also talk about your expenditure for services. So, expenditure in forex for royalty, know-how, technical know-how, what or, or all other services. And then, whatever imports you did, talk about its value. Plus, also talk about the value of indigenous raw material and the capital goods that you took and their percentage and their percentage to the total consumption. Out of the total consumption, how much was imported, how much was indigenous that is from India. 
and last point you will forget because it is a micro point it is about the disclosure of micro small medium enterprise that is msme development act 2006 very good now so we talk about management representation that is the written representation these are the same points that are the parents responsibility all components proper consolidation adjustment in day s24 in day s108 done 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 now coming the reporting part first part is very easy parents auditor is also the auditor of components so just see whether the ppfs preparation and presentation of financial statement is done as per the accounting standard if there is a deviation modify your opinion as per SA705 and then check whether there is a true and fair view of the balance sheet, PNL and cash flow. Come on, balance sheet, PNL and cash flow. Balance sheet, PNL and cash flow. Oh, oh, oh. Now come sir, whether the parents auditor, wh what happens when the parents auditor is not the auditor of the component? That means it is a different auditor. I have to use the work of other auditor. Whenever you have to use the work of other auditor, which SA gets applicable? SA600. SA600 that is O4 other auditor o for other auditor then we discuss that if all of us are presenting a report and i just give my name all your name is removed how will you feel sir we will feel very very bad our name should also be there so you want me to disclose how much work is done by the other auditor yes sir disclose are how will i disclose other matter para other auditor other matter para other auditor other matter para sa 706 so, make a reference to the other auditor and tell the amount, magnitude of portion of the financial statement audited by the other auditor. How can I tell this magnitude? Two options are available. First option, give the aggregate amount or mention in percentage terms. Percentage of the total assets, total revenue, total cash flows. Come on, ARC. Total asset, total revenue, total cash flow. One more time, total asset, total revenue, total cash flow. These assets, revenue and cash flow should be before the consolidation adjustment and at the end of the day mention to the users that you are not qualifying the report you are just mentioning about the divided responsibility sir what if the component auditors report okay my component is located in us my component is located in us and those financial statement are prepared as per us gap that means gap conversion needs to be done now this gap conversion can be done by the components management and its auditor or it can be done by the parent entities management and the management. If the component is doing this conversion itself, it must be having a group accounting manual. So check whether the group accounting manual complies with the gap applicable to the parent. If they are giving the financial statement as it is, and it is the parent's management which is performing the conversion adjustment, you as the auditor need to audit the conversion adjustment. So two of the possibilities are given. Then in case component is not audited, modify the opinion, the answer is no. <laughs> the answer is no, you need to consider materiality that is the qualitative and quantitative factor. So they just write in a proper format. Generally, start like this. Generally, generally the financial statement of all the components included in the CFS should be audited. They should be subject to audit procedure as a part of multi-location group audit. Okay? But sometimes if they are not audited, it could lead to a possible modification. Again, we are not sure. There is a possibility of modification because we have not got sufficient and appropriate evidence. Then evaluate that possibility as per SA705 considering the materiality or you can say qualitative and quantitative factors. And just remember one thing. Push harder than yesterday if you want a better tomorrow for yourself. Okay? So let's keep on doing hard work. Let's keep on working harder and definitely we will see the results. That's all for today. Keep smiling. Keep studying with happiness because then only we progress. Have an awesome day ahead and yes, let's catch up in the next class.